Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Joachim Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, September 16th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Brethren, working together with him, we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time, I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, through good endurance, afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, tumults, labors, watching, hunger, by purity, knowledge, forbearance, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying yet behold we live, as punished yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. And today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter chapter 7, excuse me, verses 36 through 50. At that time, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was at table with the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wipe them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet... He would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Jesus answered him and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, What is it, teacher? And he said, A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, to whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. Yet she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. Yet from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who were at table with him began to say amongst themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. And today we continue our reading of The Way of the Ascetics, chapter 16. And the title of this chapter is On Prayer. From the foregoing, we understand that by prayer, the Holy Fathers are not referring to occasional prayer, morning and evening devotions and grace at meals, but for them prayer is synonymous with unceasing prayer, the life of prayer. Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, is to be taken as a literal command. Understood in this way, prayer is the science of scientists and the art of artists. The artist works in clay or colors, in word or tones, According to his ability, he gives them pregnancy and beauty. The working material of the praying person is living humanity. By his prayer, he shapes it, gives it pregnancy and beauty, first himself and thereby many others. The man of science studies created things and appearances. The man of prayer presses through to the creator of created things. It is not the warmth that induces his love, but the wellspring of warmth. Not the functions of life, but the origin of life. Not his own ego, but the source of consciousness in an ego, the creator of it. The artist and the scientist must put much in labor and toil before they reach maturity. The skill they desire, they never attain. If they were to wait for divine inspiration every time they go to work, they would never learn the principles of their profession. The violinist must practice perseveringly in order to be initiated into the secrets of his sensitive instrument. How much more sensitive is the human heart? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you, says St. James in his epistle, chapter 4, verse 8. For it is us to begin, 
If we take one step towards the Lord, he takes ten towards us. He who saw the prodigal son while he was yet at a distance and had compassion on him and ran and embraced him. See Luke chapter 15 verse 20. Some of you must take the first uncertain steps if you do not wish it all to draw near to God. Do not be anxious if you wish it all to draw near to God. Not, not but if you wish to it all to draw near to God. Do not be anxious about your clumsy beginning. Do not yield to shyness and uncertainty and the mocking laughter of enemies who try to persuade you that you are behaving ridiculously and that the whole thing is only a child of fantasy or meaningless. Know that there is nothing the enemy fears like prayer. The child's desire to read increases as he learns to read. The further one gets into language, the better he speaks it and the more he likes it. Enjoyment increases with proficiency. Proficiency comes with practice. Practice becomes more pleasant as proficiency increases. Do not suppose that it is otherwise with prayer. Do not wait for some extraordinary divine inspiration before setting to work. Man is created for prayer just as he is created to speak and to think, but especially for prayer. For the Lord put in man into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And where will you find the Garden of Eden if not in your heart? Like Adam, you ought to weep for Eden, the Eden of which you have been deprived because of your incontinence. You were clad in fig leaves and garments of skin. See, for example, Genesis 3.21. That is your perishable substance with its suffering. Between you and the narrow way to the tree of life lay the dark flames of earthly desires. And only to him who conquers these desires will it be given to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. See Revelation 2.7. How hard it is to win such a victory. Adam broke the only one of the Lord's commandments. Daily and hourly you break them all, says St. Andrew of Crete. From your position as a hardened, constant criminal, your prayer must go forth in order to reach the heights. The hardened criminal often is not conscious of his guilt. He is hardened. So it is with us. Do not let yourself be frightened by the hardness of your own heart. Prayer will gradually soften it. And may God bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.